Hello everybody and welcome to a video on the Constructive Criticism YouTube channel. I'm Spencer, host of Constructive Criticism and Limited Time Only, two, pods, two podcasts about getting better at Magic the Gathering. Today we're talking about one of my favorite decks in Modern, we're talking about Green Red Titan Shift. So uh, last season at the Modern RPTQs uh, I was just playing for fun as I wasn't uh, actually able to go to the Pro Tour because I knew I had a baby on the way. I got to play uh, Rug Scape Shift and Green uh, and Naya Titan Breach um, in some PPTQs, topped both of them, and really enjoyed my time playing Primeval Titan. I've actually been playing Primeval Titan for a long time in Modern, uh, having it included as either a one of or a two of in most of my Rug Shapeshift variants. And it's nice to see that people have uh, really adopted Primeval Titan into the forefront of Modern, uh, being being a huge part of the metagame in the form of this deck, and also seeing that they've moved away from the, the Titan Breach version, and it's more widely adopted that the just straight up straight shift, Scape Shift Primeval Titan deck is is where you want to be right now. So let's talk about this deck and, and kind of where I'm at with the deck as someone who plays a lot of these style of decks. Uh, I, I think that I have a lot to say on this, and uh, I could be right, I could be wrong, but it's it's a deck that I've thoroughly enjoyed over my time playing Magic uh, in very di many different flavors. Uh, we have one Engineered Explosives. This card is a new inclusion of the deck, at least into the main deck, because of decks like Death Shadow. Uh, you know, you don't actually have that good of answers in Red Green for Death Shadow, uh, other than the fact that you're a little bit faster than them, and they have they have a hard time interacting with you outside of Discord card spells which honestly just aren't that good against your deck typically um being able to slow them down a little bit um or having them have to take this with their discard interaction is really powerful so uh, engineer explosives being one of the cards that really lets you gain advantages over large creatures in multiple positions so if they have uh, you know multiple termagoyves or if they have multiple death shadows uh you get death shadows you get to uh you don't really get them with this card, and uh, a lot of people are replacing their lightning bolts with this. I, I also replaced some number of lightning bolt, being one of my my lightning bolts that I played in the past, and I, I really enjoyed uh, testing out engineer explosives. I could see actually wanting more of them in specific meta games, and this could be one of them. So really good inclusion in, uh, into the main deck. We have four primeval titans. This card is really important to the deck. Uh, primeval titan is a huge part of. Uh, you know, one of the reasons that I really fell in love with Magic was Primeval Titan Ramp decks, and, you know, th this card does a lot for the deck. I don't think people realize that once you resolve a Primeval Titan in so many different matchups, you know, you go and get a couple of Volokuts, and it turns your Sakura Tribelbers, or your Wood Elves, or your Far Seeks, or your Search for, tom for Tomorrows into win conditions, right? You know, you're able to go and be like, all right, deal you six, play a fetch, then deal you six, and that's a huge chunk of damage, and Primeval Titan does that almost entirely by himself, uh, which is pretty powerful. Uh, next up, we have the four secure tri builders. This card is really important to the deck. Um, it, it's so funny when you look at this card, you think, oh, like whatever, it's like a bad rampant growth. That's actually not true. It's actually just like the good version of rampant growth. So being able, you know, being specifically able to be in play, block a creature, sacrifice it, gain some life. It's like the rampant growth that gains you three life or two life or more than that sometimes, and that's really powerful. A uh, secure tri builder is a huge important reason that this deck can be successful and can slow down decks enough that you know it's it's combo kills and it's ramp kills are, are powerful enough so secure tribal there being a four of is really important what else is a new inclusion in the deck this card um replaces things like oracle of moldaya or uh uh, Corsair of Crufix, and uh, I'm happy to try it out. It's something that I've enjoyed. I played a few games of the deck uh, today, and it's been totally fine. I did cut from two down to one. Um, so here, here's the thing: is that like I would, if I wanted two of, I want it to be pretty great. Uh, and Corsair of Crufix or Oracle Mandaya sometimes was able to do that, but I think that Wood Elves is just that perfect. Like, this is something that I, I'm happy to have an effect of, and it lets me play more different spells in my deck uh, instead of playing something in the three slot, quote-unquote. Uh, and, and I've been pretty happy with it. Being able to go out and get a Cinder Glade, put it into play tap, really advance my game plan, um, while also getting me some life. Basically, being that fifth secure tribe builder is, has been pretty powerful. We do have three, light, three lightning bolts right now. This card is pretty good. Um... Here's the thing is Lightning Bolt is on the decline in, in Modern, and that kind of includes in this deck. There are times where this card is great, and you're really happy that you have it in your deck, and there are times where it's really not. So I, I could actually see this cutting down, playing some more engineering explosives, different things like that. Um, but right now, I, I am being stubborn, and I still have them in the deck, but you could actually convince me 
that it is incorrect right now to be playing Lightning Bolt, and I could change my deck accordingly. Um, w one thing that I like about Lightning Bolt is it does give you some spells to play off of Chandra's Plus, so if you're actually able to play a Chandra Plus it, go to 5, kill a creature, it's really hard for them to kill it, which means that you can fi follow up with a Primeval Titan, and in those situations, Lightning Bolt has actually been very good still in the deck, so because of that, I I've kept it in. Um, and and I, I have still been happy with it because of the inclusion of Chandra Torch of Defense, which we'll get to in just a second. We do have three Summoners Pack. These are basically the other Primeval Titans in the deck. You, you're pretty, you know, you play you play this when you want to play that Primeval Titan, you play the Primeval Titan, and it's pretty easy to see that uh, coming up next, uh, we're going to be paying four, but it's okay, because if we get an untap and attack with that Primeval Titan, it's usually some GG's. And uh, because of that, you're willing to play the cost of playing Summoner's Pact in your deck. We do have three Chandra Torch of Defiance. Uh, this card has gone up from a 2 of to a 3 of for me. I've actually been really impressed with it being able to ramp into, uh, you know, Primeval Titan while being able to draw extra cards, being able to protect itself with Lightning Bolt, as I already mentioned, being able to just kill a large creature in the deck that, that it current, currently couldn't do. Uh, all, all these things add up to this card kind of just being perfect for this deck. Uh, I always expected Chandra to make a... Uh, splash in modern uh, this was not the deck that I thought it would be but I'm happy that it is because I really enjoy the card and I really enjoyed this deck so thank you so much to Chandra Torch Defiance for for getting me off of rug finally this is actually the card that really did it I I was like you know what do I really need blue if I get if I get to play Chandra the answer was yeah I don't know but <laughs> I I really enjoyed I really enjoyed casting the card and being able to protect it with lightning bolt, being able to ramp into primeval titan, um, and it, you know it getting you some amount of life over the game because people are just pressured into attacking it. Uh, you know, Chandra's Sean, emblem I I have one with uh, in some of my games today, so. Uh, pretty pretty great. Uh, Two Air of the Gods is my next inclusion here. One of the, one of the things that you'll see in different decks is you'll see Sweltering Suns. And here's the thing is that I think that Dredge is relevant enough, and it will be relevant enough and uh, represented enough, really, in GP Las Vegas that I, I would just rather have Anger of the Gods. Um, I understand the appeal of Sweltering Suns because in the matchups where you don't want Anger, being able to cycle it would just be so powerful. But I just think that... The power of having it in your main deck and being able to free up some sideboard slots for that dredge matchup, um, being able to just have enough dredge cards while being a fast, uh, aggressive combo-ish deck, ramp style deck, it, it's really powerful. So because of that, I've continued to play Inger, and I've been really happy with it. Next up, we do have four Farseek. This card is a great inclusion into the deck. Um, we, the the you'll see some of these people split these between explorers or calling hard expeditions. I'm in the four four far seek plan because I really like streamlined ramp decks. I like my decks to be what I want to do all the time. Um, you know, b letting me be rewarded for good mulliganing and good sequencing um, rather than you know cute deck building basically. Uh, and I think that far seek just fills the 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 exact things that you want to do, being able to actually go and grab a Cinder Glade, a Shelter Thicket, or a Stomping Ground, being able to advance your game plan in the form of getting a Mountain Slash Forest while, while also being able to ramp you into Primeval Titan is really important so that you can actually go and grab Double Vol Kit. It's something that I've seen the Explore decks really struggle with, and I, I, don't, I just don't want that to be a problem. We have four Scape Shift next. This card uh, is one that I think a lot of people misunderstand how it works. It is a one card combo. So basically, once you get to seven lands, you can go ahead and cast Scape Shift. You go and grab a Volica Molten Pinnacle and six mountain uh, lands, uh, and then all of those mountains will actually see each other with the Volica Molten Pinnacle at once, um, and they'll all deal three damage at the same time, dealing your opponent 18 damage, which is usually in modern enough to go ahead and, and seal that game plan. Um, or if you have eight lands, you can actually deal them 36 and, and really punish them even if they've gained a bunch of life. So, uh, Shift. Um, being that one card combo, uh, Primeval Titan goes gets you from six to eight, so they're pretty much just guaranteed to be dead, um, no matter what the, the following turn. I I really uh, like Escape Shift decks. It's something that um, I I've been playing since old PTQ style seasons, and um, I, I it's it's just been really fun, and I really enjoy it. So um, Escape Shift super powerful card. So and also being able to be able to like play this four mana card against control decks that instantly kills them really makes them have to get question the way that they play and the, it really helps you be able to sequence correctly uh sequence in a way that disadvantages them because you already have a mana advantage and uh i'm a pretty big fan of that so the last the last uh spell in the deck we have is four search for tomorrow be able to spend this on turn one get you the mana when you want it uh to play your four drop still it's really powerful also being able to play it with an untapped 
uh, land is pretty great because it lets you leave up things like Lightning Bolt, another reason that I still like Lightning Bolt in the deck, to really protect your life total and get you to the point where you can cast those Primeval Titans and Escape Shifts. Uh, the land base that we have right now is 3 Cinder Glade, uh, 3 Forest, 6 Mountain, 2 Sheltered Thicket, 3 Stomping Ground, 4 Volokit the Molten Pinnacle, 2 Windswept Heath, and 4 Wooded Foothills, uh, giving you just enough resources to be able to try and compete with those Blood Moon decks. Surprisingly, between Chandra and Primeval Titan, and uh, cards like uh, Obstinate Bailoff Post Board and Tireless Shocker and stuff like that, uh, if, if you're pretty confident that you're going to be playing against Blood Moon, it's actually still pretty easy for you to beat it. One of the things that I really liked about Rug Scape Shift was the ability to beat Blood Moons, and you like literally just didn't care playing things like Inferno Titan in those decks pretty often. Um, this deck is still capable of doing that, which is something that I really appreciate. We do have a sideboard of one Engineered Explosives, giving you... Uh, I, I actually... I'm starting to think that I want more of this card, whether it's between the main and the side, but it just gives you enough of... Uh, of what you need against Tarmac Waves and Death Shadows. We have one Graph Figures Cage and one Relic of Progenitus, giving us kind of a split idea of what we want to do against certain types of decks. One of the reasons that you can't do all Graph Figures Cage uh, or all Relic of Progenitus is the kind of different graveyard interactions that you have. So you want to make sure that you kind of split those up in, in some way. Uh, we have four Obstinate Bailoth. Um, uh, this has been... Uh, this is maybe a weakness of Vine Magic really wanting to have enough it against um, burn decks. Uh, it's possible that this needs to be, like, one of these needs to be either something like a batter skull or a warm coil engine, but, you know, I, I really like going two to four um, against some of those burn decks, and, and Obstinate Bailoth is this huge creature that also gets to attack and, and really help you against different styles of decks. We have two Tyler Striker. I've been really impressed with this card, in all honesty. The card is able to act as another two to four uh, threat against control decks, leaving you know playing it after you ramp, playing a fetch land, getting two clues, really advancing your game plan in a great way because you can ramp and crack clues at the same time so easily in this deck. Uh, we have two ancient grudge. Uh, you know, it's pretty important against uh, a few different decks actually. One of them being um, the one of them being the lantern deck it is super important to be able to. Uh, actually be able to beat that deck with, with something like Ancient Grudge, uh, you know, hit, hitting your graveyard. And then also, if they have to spend something like uh, Surgical Extraction on this, it means that it's less likely that they're able to do it against your Velocates, and you can go ahead and try to win the game that way. We have uh, one Fracturing Gust. I, I'm honestly a little bit surprised. I did not think that I would like this card um, as much as I do, um, but weirdly, I'm okay with this costing 5 mana. I'm not going to lie, I was super hesitant to put this card in my deck, it's been pretty okay. I, I have always been a Shatterstorm kind of guy, and uh, this has this just done... It's come up in enough situations where I was okay with it, um, which is so weird. Uh, we have one Nature's Claim and two Crumble the Ducks to round out the sideboard. Crumble the Dust is super important in the sideboard. Uh, it really gives you an advantage in multiple matchups. And, and um, I do want to say, though, I, the number of people I've... So this destroys a target ba non-basic land, and then you search. It doesn't actually kill all the basic lands in play of that type, so don't think that you're going to get a 4 for 1 by destroying a 4 of in play, which so often people think that that's what this does. But that is it for this deck. Um, thank you everybody for watching. This is a deck that I'll be testing, trying to get ready for the modern GP, uh, if this is what I end up playing. Uh, it's one of three decks that I'm considering, so uh, you can support this show, uh, these these YouTube videos by going to patreon.com slash ccmdg, becoming a patron. Uh, you know, th this is really fun for me. I, I really enjoy making content for people. If every person watching and listening to all of our content just donated $1 or more per month, we could quit our jobs, do magic YouTube uh, and podcasting stuff full time and uh, really make some awesome content. So so check that out at patreon.com slash ccmtg. Uh, just starting at $1 per month, anything you see fit is really appreciated. And we'll see you guys all next week with another uh, awesome deck tech. Uh, this is one that I really enjoyed doing, and I look forward to uh, testing for these GPs and giving updates and things like that. So you can uh, you can check us out uh, at constructivecriticism.com for more awesome updates. And thank you, everybody, for watching.